on guys uh today i will be doing uh an interview with brock miller he is a former punter of the uh los angeles rams um and he is currently a um member of the seattle dragons as a uh punter on their uh uh, on their roster. So he is the Seattle Dragons punter as of right now. I'm going to uh, give him a ring here in a second. I just want to go ahead and say uh, thank you to uh, Game Changer Sports Network for bringing us on, uh, Talk Interference Sports. We've been here for a little bit. If you guys haven't checked out Talk Interference Sports before, go check out our page. Um, and uh, if you're watching us elsewhere, go check out Game Changer Sports Network and uh, Talk Interference Sports. Um, great guys, great stuff going on here. Um, and again, we are about to be joined by a former punter of the Los Angeles Rams. He is currently on the uh, Seattle Dragons roster for the XFL. So we're looking at um, an XFL player uh, once again. And like I said, I'm trying to get a lot of coverage of um, XFL. I want to try and cover this as much as possible. So, uh, guys, bear with me while we're doing this. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and give him a call. Let's give him a ring. And uh, thanks for everybody who uh, is joining us. Uh, and shout out Jeff's Basement and Kids Up Connection. Brock Miller, everybody. So we're talking to. Hello, this is Brock. Hey, Brock. How's it going? This is Nick. Nick, how are you, man? I'm doing Thanks for having me. fantastic. I'm really excited. We just had um, uh, Kirk Barron, who's uh, supposed to be the center on the roster, talk to right us on. just uh, just a couple days ago. So I'm really excited to cover some of this XFL stuff. So thank you so for much sure, for your man. time. Um, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. How, how was your day today? Man, it was great. Can't complain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, just hit the weight room, uh, did some recovery stuff, and, you know, just getting the body ready for, uh, you know, mini camp and stuff coming up. So I uh, can't get here fast enough. I'm ready to roll now. But, uh, yeah, that's just kind of been my day-in, day-out routine. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. You know, uh, I've been uh, trying to scramble around all day today, but now I got you. We're sitting down. We're having a conversation. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Likewise, man. Let's do this thing. So the uh, mini camps start the fourth. Yes. Do you yes, feel pretty prepared about it? Is, yeah, I believe our travel day is the third. Um, I don't know a lot about what to expect, um, other than you know I'll just be ready to go. Um, and then I just believe it's through the to the nineteenth, and then, you know we're back for the holidays, and then um, you know after the new year uh, we'll be out in uh, uh, training camp. It's just some central location is what I've heard. So pretty excited. Anybody who has just joined us, we're joined by Brock Miller. He is currently on the XFL Seattle Dragons roster as their punter. He spent a little time in the NFL. Um, you got to punt a few for the Rams, right? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me about yes. a little bit of, of what you got from your time with the Rams? Yeah, absolutely. So I was uh, signed just a week, uh, about a week and a half before week one of the preseason. So, so we were still, they were still in training camp. Uh, this team's coordinator had worked me out in the past and uh, said I was going to come in and, and essentially, you know, give Johnny a Hecker, J Johnny Hecker a break, um, you know, so he can go into the season fresh. But I was extremely thankful for that because um, I hadn't up to this point ever played in the preseason. You know, I had tons of workouts with teams, mini camps, practice squads, things like that. Um, so I needed that, that film, um, you know, essentially playing in a professional game. Um, and to get it with the Rams, uh, which is, you know, pretty much a hometown team for me. I'm in San Diego now. The Chargers are gone. So, um Oh, the Rams, a hometown team, um, and to learn from, you know, arguably the best punter in the NFL right now, Johnny Hecker, for four and a half weeks um, was awesome. And then to top it all off, you know, 
I felt I had four really, really good games back to back to back to back. And um, super thankful for that. And I think that's part of the reason why Seattle uh, wanted to draft me and give me a chance in the XFL. So um, awesome experience, though, overall. Yeah, I, I saw that um, they were trying to get Johnny a little bit of a break. Can you tell us um, what did you learn most from him or maybe just being on the Rams just in general? Yeah, um, you know, from Johnny and Greg Zerline, the kicker, um, along with Jake McQuaid, the long snapper, and even the special teams coach, um, John Fossil, I just learned what it really means, you know, how to be a true pro. Um, it's kind of hard for me to explain, you know, what that means, but it's just kind of how you prepare week to week. You know, you come in on a Monday and we have a game, uh, that Saturday or Sunday, just kind of how you prepare your weeks. Um, the way you structure everything, the way you take care of your body, the things you do in the weight room, drills on the field, how often you kick, you know, I really got to see three of the best specialists in the NFL, um, how they prepare week to week and then sort of formulate that and structure that in a way that works well for me. Um, and that was something I'd never, never had before. Um, so that was huge. Um, and then, you know, just the punt alongside Pecker, you know, one-on-one -on -one and, and really give myself something to, you know, compare my skills to That was huge confidence wise. Um, saying, Hey, you know, I'm right there. I think, you know, I think that gave me a lot of confidence to say, Hey, you know, I belong in this league, and I can pretty much. Uh, I think I think there's another team out there who'll give me a shot uh, to be their guy. I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, so both of those things, uh, really thankful for um, confidence, and then just you know how to how to be a pro. Um, learning from the specialists there was invaluable. Really, it was awesome. I like it. That's awesome. Yeah. What does it mean to you to have finished the 2012 season in your in your college career um, with the SUU record of 42.6 yards per career, or per punt as a career average? It was pretty special, man. I, uh, I don't know how much you know about Southern Utah University. You know, it's kind of a smaller – Yeah, not much. Uh, one, one AA school. But, um, yeah, it was um, – it's a tough place to punt. You know, yeah, we are at elevation, but um, – kind of in the high desert up there uh, in southern Utah. And it gets really dang cold. It gets super windy. Um, and it can make it, you know, pretty hard to uh, to perform your best. And, you know, I'm from San Diego originally, so. Oh, we lost him. We lost him, but we'll get him back. Uh, let's try and uh, give, him, give him a second. Maybe he'll call us back real quick. But um, if anybody is not – aware we were talking to Brock Miller. Uh, he uh, is a former punter from the Rams and a current XFL Seattle Dragons roster punter. Uh, let's try and give him a call here again real quick. Sorry about that, guys. Your call has been forwarded Ooh. to an automated voice all right, we'll give him a second, see if he'll call us. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this XFL. Um, I think it's going to be a great transition from what we wanted the AAF to be and what um, the um, NFL could be, um, you know, as an extended season or what we're looking for after the NFL um, so I'm really excited to cover some of this, uh, XFL stuff, guys. Uh, it's super fantastic. I want to give it a chance. Hello. Hey, Hi, I, my friend. no, it's all good. I lost you there for a second. No worries though. It's happened before. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it was, I think I enabled Wi-Fi calling there. So I turned that off. Hopefully it's clear now. We can continue uh if that's not you know gonna throw everything off no man i am used to dealing with stuff like that on the fly so no worries about it let's just keep All on right. rolling um we were talking about your time in utah yes sir okay that's right um yeah so i um broke a couple records up there and it was you know kind of tough to do because you know the weather in southern utah can be pretty brutal uh november december games you know we don't have an indoor 
uh, stadium or anything like that. So weather wise, um, such as like, is it snowing or is it super windy? It's it's usually both. Okay. <laughs> so uh, mainly the wind, though. You know, more so than than the cold. Um, you know, I used to joke with our kicker all the time. That's like, hey, we'd take wet and snow if it was dead calm over the, the howling winds that we got. But looking back now, um, I think. I'm really blessed that, that I ended up going to that school because I really think it did. It made me a better punter um, being there for four years um, and really learning how to um, work in the wind, work in the cold. Um, and, you know, you just sort of add that to your tool bag of things that, you know, you would make you a better player. So um, awesome experience out there as well. And uh, yeah, I thought it made me better. So, you know, we don't, we don't get the elements here in San Diego to work with. So, so I had to use my college days for, uh, for that, but it was great. Do you um, just kind of learn on the fly, like Kentucky windage for this? Yeah, I mean, you just kind of, um, as a young guy, you know, just coming out of high school, going into college and trying to figure it out, you just sort of, it's just putting the time in, you know, um, doing drills, working at practice on how the wind affects how you drop the ball and, and everything like that. And you know, time after time, month after month, doing it over and over, you just kind of figure out how to work with it and how to, you know, put your best product out there given the conditions. And that's, I think, helped me, you know, tremendously. Now, um, you know, I've had a couple pro workouts in Chicago and Green Bay and things like that where, you know, had I played at, at San Diego State or where I wanted to go coming out of high school or something like that that I don't know, you know, I don't know if I really would have been ready for things like that. So, um, yeah, just, just grinding it out and putting the time in, in those conditions really, you know, you learn to adapt and learn to make it work. I like that. So yeah. what, what, what drew you to the punter position? Did you know that that's what you wanted to do when you first started playing football? That's a great question. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of kids start out playing Pop Warner or, you know, tackle as a young kid. I never did. Um, I actually grew, grew up playing hockey longer than I played football. I had like that. cousins that got me into, into hockey. Um, but, uh, started playing flag football, uh, elementary school and middle school and things like that. And I played receiver and defensive back and, you know, I was pretty fast, things like that. And then we were transitioning to high school, you know, putting the pads on for the first time and all my buddies, you know, we were really excited to to take the next step, you know, hitting people, this and that. But I was kind of behind the ball as far as, um, you know, maturing goes. I was still really small, really scrawny. I think even as a sophomore in high school, I was like about 120 pounds probably. Um, so I was sort of worried of, you know, like, shoot, you know, I don't know if I want to take any hits. I was like, <laughs> you know, I could probably start kicking the ball and, you know, still be with my buddies that play football and still be on the team. And sure enough, that's kind of just how it started. I was like, you know, I want to, I want to be on the football team. Um, but I don't want to get hit. I don't want, I don't want to get killed. I'm too small. I gotta wait till I get bigger. So, um, my dad and I, we, you know, we found an old kicking tee and we started. You know, I originally started kicking field goals, um, and then you know, punting and kicking just kind of goes hand in hand. And I really started to enjoy it. And I was like, man, this is something that I just thought about. Now I'm really, I really want to work at this and see you know, see if I could maybe play on varsity one day, you know, in high school and then, oh, maybe, you know, go to college. And it's just kind of escalated from there as, you know, this journey I've been on is something that I still love doing. Yeah, that actually transitions me well into my next question. You said that you were kicking field goals. I saw that you kicked field goals in college. Why yes. did you transition to specifically punting? That is a good question. Um, so uh, I redshirted as a freshman. Uh, in 2009, I believe, at Southern Utah, and always considered myself a kicker. You know, in high school, you usually got a guy, you know, you do both. You, you punt and kick, but I always considered myself more of a kicker. So, redshirt year ends. Uh, I go into 2010. They have a punter kickoff specialist. It was a little shaky on field goals, and sure enough, um, you know, I got the start week one. It was at uh, University of Wyoming in Laramie. And I played a whole season of just just doing place kicks. And I was like, man, this is great. I'm going to have, um, you know, the next guy was, the, the, the punter kickoff guy was graduating. I was like, man, I think I'm going to do everything and, um, you know, have a great career here. Well, they recruited um, a semi-pro soccer player who had never played football before. 
he came down from northern Utah, ended up becoming one of my best friends. And he was, to be honest, he was a, a much better kicker than I was, but he couldn't punt, you know, strictly from soccer. And uh, he ended up being a two-time All-American, um, just a just freak athlete, um, really gifted. Um, but he came, like I said, straight from soccer and he couldn't punt. So just out of necessity of the team, um, the coach said, hey, you know, he's going to be our kicker, but, you know, we need somebody to punt. And at first I was a little bit discouraged because, you know, I really enjoyed kicking um, almost more than I enjoyed punting, I think. Um, but looking back, God, the way God worked, his, the plan in my life was just amazing because my punting – constantly kept improving whereas when i was kicking in college i really wasn't getting a whole lot better at it um kind of hit the ceiling there new kid gets recruited and then i start punting and um my performance just kind of went through the roof and ultimately became a punter and then being a lefty punter on top of that um i learned is really valuable we had tons of muffs um Tons of guys dropping balls all over the place when I was punting. I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. So, Yeah, so I was reading about left-footed punting and how it's so unorthodox. Why do you feel that it's so uncommon and so unorthodox and guys have issues catching the ball because of that? Yeah, so, you know, I've never <clears throat> I've never returned punts personally, you know, but I've talked to a lot of guys, um, you know, who are used to seeing a right-footed spiral come off, um, a righty's all – leg all the time and they're used to seeing it one way and essentially somebody broke it down for me and they basically said you know when every time it comes off a lefty's foot you know whatever the ball does it's like it's mirrored of what they're usually used to seeing so if the ball doesn't turn over it usually fades this way from a righty and then it's the opposite for a lefty and if it does turn over it fades to the right for a righty and then a left for a lefty so but if you're the one back there catching the ball it's all backwards so if you don't have time to prepare for that, um, you know, it can really catch guys off guard. I yeah. Mean, they, yeah, um, no, I can imagine. Anytime you can change the possession on a muff punt or something like that, especially in the NFL, games are so close that, you know, I think I think it's a, a weapon to be left-footed. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but um, it makes a difference for sure. I like that. I didn't even remotely think about – the difference between right-footed and left-footed punters and how much of a difference that makes. So I really like the perspective on that. Um, yeah, absolutely. What was your most memorable punt in Utah, you would think? Oh, that's a good one. Um, memorable punt. So my first, going back to, yeah, you know, kicking field goals at first, my first college punt after making the transition from essentially kicker to punter was – in 2012 as the starter against Utah State it was like really my first punt ever and it was like 72 yards um just went over the guy's head and and kept rolling and so that one sticks out for sure um and then I ran a couple of fake punts that those those really stick out I guess I didn't technically kick the ball but uh had a fake punt that set up a game-winning field goal against uh University of Montana that same year and then uh Another one, my senior year against South Alabama, where I just ran for a first down and then kicked the field goal to win the game by one. I like it. You know, uh, and a division opponent that was a division above us. Um, so those were cool. Um, but obviously, you know, the long punts really, really stick out that most. I remember that one, you know, at Utah State, just sailing over the guy's head. That's a good feeling to see a guy turn around and have to back up to chase it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. So um, I did a little digging on your social media. Awesome. Tell us about the putts, punts for pups program you recently were tweeting about. Oh yeah, I just um, so my first time signing an NFL contract with an NFL team was in 2017 um, with the San Francisco 49ers, and the punter there at the time was Bradley Pinion, and he's actually the punter for the Tampa Bay Bucks now. And I had just I'm friends with him on social media. And I just, I'm a huge dog lover, um, just like he is. Um, the same with my wife. And I saw him post about the punts per pups. And I believe that's every time he's got however many punts inside the 20 in a the game, they, you know, they pay for a shelter dog's adoption fees. Um, and so that was something that I was like, hey, this is really cool. You know, um, you know, tons of guys in the NFL 
have all different kinds of causes or charities or things that they're donating to or are passionate about. And that was just one that I saw recently from uh, from Bradley in Tampa, and I thought that was that was sort of cool. I like that. Idea. That's cool. Yeah. Um. So you also said that the Rams have the best uniform in the league. Do you really believe that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um. So we were um. My brother and I were raised Rams fans, but my dad, my dad was a L.A. Rams season ticket holder back in the '80s when okay. they were originally there. And then when we were kids, you know, watching the the St. Louis Rams, you know, in the Super Bowl against the Titans in '99 with Kurt Warner, yeah, you know, the greatest show on turf. Like that was that was so cool as a kid to watch that, you know, because it was kind of like our family team. And then to essentially get that get to wear that uniform, even though it was just in the preseason, um, was just a dream come true. Um, and again, I may be biased, but uh, those throwbacks, uh, the blue and yellow, it's tough to beat it. I think those are uh, some of the best up there for sure. Okay. All right. I got one yeah. more one more thing on your social media, and then we can get into talking about some XFL and some Seattle stuff. Um, it was tweeted out that you were brought to the Rams right before the Super Bowl to prepare for Ryan Allen. Yes. What was that experience like for you to be part of helping them prepare for a Super Bowl? That was, um, you know, so that's, that's funny. I've been asked about that before. Um, you know, up until that point in 2018, I had uh, several, I want to say maybe nine or ten teams do that where they just, they're playing a lefty on Sunday. You know, granted it wasn't Super Bowl Sunday, but they said, hey, um, you know, we think, you're one of the better left-footed guys out there. We want to bring you in and, you know, kick to our returners um, so they can get a look at that lefty spiral. But then also, hey, you know, it gives gives me a chance to get my name out on the work, the workout wire and things like that. Um, and that just so happened to be that, that the Rams wanted to do that before they went to Atlanta uh, and play in the Super Bowl. And um, I had probably one of my best workouts ever, um, punning to um, – Jojo Natson, the Rams returner, um, just to get him comfortable before, you know, the Super Bowl and, um, you know, on that big stage. So, so that was really, really cool. Um, regardless, you know, it was pretty much just like any other workout, I'd say. Um, you know, we did, we hit some balls left and right. And then the, uh, Australian rules and over end balls just to get him comfortable back there. But it was a great workout. And I think that's part of the reason why, um, Coach Fossil, the special teams coordinator, gave me that chance to come in, <clears throat> even though it was the following year, uh, for this for this preseason and get some tape. Um, so it was a great experience all around. That's awesome. I, they yeah. really helped you out down there in, in Los Angeles, didn't they? That's awesome. They sure did, yeah. And, and, and Coach Fossil's done that for some other guys in the past. Um, he, he sort of compared me to to Michael Pilardi, who is now the Carolina Panthers punter, you know, we're similar height guys. He's a lefty and Michael Pilardi got his start in St. Louis with the Rams in 2015. And, and, uh, you know, credit to coach Fossil. I mean, I owe him everything for giving me that opportunity because it's, it's opened so many doors just, just to have good preseason numbers now. Yeah, um, that's great. NFL team. And he said, he said, Hey, obviously, you know, you're not going to have a career with us, but he said, I, I think you can, can play in this league and I want to give you an opportunity to, to put on tape what, what you can do. And I was able to do just that. So that guy, he's, he's a great man on and off the field. And it was, uh, you know, best four and a half weeks of my life, to be honest. It was great. That's awesome. I, I like yeah. that. Um, it was a great, yeah, great thing for sure. Did you, did you have any punters that you idolized when you were growing up? Um, you know, it's funny because it kind of goes, goes back to when I was kicking in high school. Um, I really wasn't watching the punters as much as I was watching the kickers because I always considered myself a kicker first. Right. Um, but going off of that, um, Robbie Gold is somebody that I watched a lot. Um, you know, he was in Chicago at the time when I was in high school. And then, you know, funniest story about him was he was in 2017 when I signed with the San Francisco 49ers. That was his first year coming over uh, <clears throat> from Chicago to kick for them. And so that really came full circle. That That's was cool. Of, you know, 
a weird thing how that worked out. It's like, here's a guy that I really, you know, watched a lot on, you know, on TV growing up. And now, you know, I was holding for him and, you know, he was my teammate and we were in the locker room together every day. I was like, wow, this is, this is surreal how things work out sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so uh, that was, he was probably the guy that I looked up to the most, um, you know, when I was just a young kicker. Um, if anybody who has joined us doesn't know, um, we're talking to Brock Miller, former Rams punter, uh, current punter on the XFL Seattle Dragons roster. Um, did you watch any of the XFL when it was introduced back in 2001? You know, so I was, I was pretty young, so I really didn't, I remember hearing about it. Um, I didn't, didn't watch it live or anything like that when I was, when I was growing up, when it was still around. Um, but since, you know, since it's been popping up and I remember, you know, even before I was drafted, when I was selected in the draft pool and things like that, <clears throat> I started doing some digging and I, you know, wanted to look more about it because I'd remembered so much about it. I just hadn't seen anything. And, you know, you go straight to YouTube and they got everything you want. So right. I had to look, look up some of those old clips, but I'm excited for, for 2020 for the, you know, the revamp to get rolling. It's going to be great. Would you have been, um, a Rams fan as long as you have? Do you have a little bittersweetness of, you know, being in Seattle? I know it's different leagues, but, you know, there's a little bit of a rivalry between the two teams. Yeah, definitely. No, I did think about that. I don't really feel that way. You know, it's funny, too, another, you know, link there. I mean, that's where that's where Johnny Hecker's from originally um, is, is Seattle. Or he's, I think he went to high school just outside of Seattle up there in Washington. And so um, <clears throat> I posted on social media, uh, um you know, about getting drafted and and he reached out to me he's like man that's awesome he said you know you're gonna love the area you know let me know where you guys are gonna be training um let me know if you need anything because so, i you know all the great places up there so cool. um super excited um about that and yeah nothing nothing too crazy as far as rivalries go and then um another good friend of mine is um jason myers the kicker for seahawks now yeah um, we played against each other in, in san diego back in high school um, and, he, you know, he said the same thing. So it'll be cool. I can't wait to get up there um, and check it out. I've been to Seattle once growing up. I was like 12 or 13, so I don't remember a whole lot other than being up in the Space Needle. But um, it's I can't wait to get up there. I'm excited to stay West Coast and all that, being from San Diego. So um, no place I'd rather be. I think it'll be – I think it's going to be great. Awesome. We're excited yeah. to have you up here, man. Um, Absolutely. What is – uh, so have you done anything for the XFL, like working with any of the coaches yet or any kind of workouts? Um, not, not really. You know, I just have, have texted and, and talked with um, the assistant special teams coach a little bit, uh, you know, kind of some things he wants me to be working on. Sent him a couple film clips um, of my training lately. And he said, you know, uh, everything looks great. We'll just We'll just start working on everything, you know, once you get up here. Um, and then, you know, I've talked with a couple of the players, you know, obviously the long snapper, we, we exchanged information, um, on Twitter just to kind of go over some, some niche special teams things, yeah. um, you know, weird specialist stuff. Um, but all that's going to, I think, you know, get ironed out, um, Mini in camp? December and then obviously during training camp as we get closer to, to kick off. So cool. Cool. Um, yeah. What was your initial thought when you were selected by the Seattle Dragons during the draft? It was a it was a funny story actually on that day. Um, you know, after I was I was entered late into the the draft pool, but I was still really hoping that. What know, does that mean? Um, the the draft pool, you know, you have to your agent gets you in or they reach out. So I was I got the confirmation email saying. Hey, you're you're now able to be drafted if somebody wants to draft you. You know your name's in the hat essentially. Um, so I was got that email pretty late. I think there was other, a lot of guys that had already been, you know, the, the pool was pretty much filled up. But I was added into there. And then as we got closer to the draft date, my phone rang, um, and I essentially had a, a workout on the day of the draft with, with an NFL team. And I was like, Oh man, I was like, this is great. You know, obviously I'm excited to go work out, but I don't want to miss a call or something that, that happens, you know, if, if the next NFL team wants to take me in the draft and sure enough, that's what happened. So, uh, I missed the call and everything cause I was flying. Um, and essentially I landed and 
my phone was kind of, I had a couple texts saying congratulations. And I went on Twitter and, and saw that the, the dragons had picked me. So that's <laughs> sort of how I found out. So unfortunately I didn't get to talk to anybody right of, you know, off the bat because I was, you know, in the air, but, um, still a really cool experience overall. And I uh, was super excited to get the news. Uh, Jim Zorn has an extensive resume, especially in Seattle. How do you feel about being coached by him and in Seattle for that matter? I think it's going to be great. Um, you know, I talked to my dad the day of getting <laughs> drafted and he said, he said, you know, I was a Rams fan as a kid, but he said, man, he's like, Jim Zorn was the man. You know, he was like, my dad was telling me he was my hero growing up, you know, and especially, you know, I think it's pretty cool. He's a lefty too. So maybe he's got a special place in his heart for me, you know, guys like <laughs> me doing things lefty. Um, but I think it's going to be awesome. And then the fans too, um, you know, I've never been to a Seahawks game up there or anything, but, um, or our Sounders game, but it sounds like the fan base is going to be crazy um, no matter what. So that's another thing I'm really excited about is, is the fans and everything up there. It's wild up here, man. They like their kicky oh, sports. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, so I, I'm sure it'll be rocking. I think one of the best fans in the XFL, so that's, uh, that's more motivation right there. Um, what do you look forward to most being uh, a member of the Seattle Dragons in their inaugural season? Um, that's a good question. It's, it's, it feels really special to just to know that, you know, they're, they're taking the chance on me to, to, to be the guy for the 2020 kickoff. It's kind of, you know, it goes down as history, you know, your name and, and that roster is going to be cemented into everything. And I'm just, uh, feel really proud to, to get that call and, and, and be the guy, but I'm ready to get to work. You know, we haven't, we haven't started or anything yet. You know, nothing's really been done. Um, I'm just ready to get to work, um, but couldn't be couldn't be happier about about being a dragon. I think it's awesome. As I previously mentioned before, we were talking to uh, one of the guys who are on the O line. Uh, his name's Kirk. Um, he mentioned that uh, he doesn't have uh, or he's got competition in his position. Do you know mm -hmm. if you have any competition in the punter position? Um, I don't believe so. I know you know Greg Joseph is. I think strictly a kicker, um, but uh, competition, I'm sure, at some point um, could be brought in, I, you know, and if not, I'm, I'm still treating it like, you know, I'm competing with somebody. I know nothing's, just because you're drafted, nothing's ever handed to you, you know, at, at really any level these days. Right. Um, and that's, I've always kind of been the underdog. I mean, even going back to high school. Um, so I really... That's really all I know is, you know, sort of coming from behind to be the guy. And right. even though there's there's one punter on the roster right now being me, I'm still, you know, approaching it like, you know, I got to go win the job because I know if you don't perform that, you know, they'll get somebody else in there just like the NFL or, you know, just like anything else. So um, I think that's important uh, mentally for me to just, you know, we're not kicking back, relaxing. It's, you know, it's still putting in hard work to – Absolutely. I like so, that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome answer. All right. So feel free not to answer this one. I, I, okay. I, it's not like super crazy, but, um, you know, do you perceive your opportunity with the Seattle Dragons as a chance to get more film on your play or an opportunity or such as like another opportunity to get back into the NFL or is it a long-term situation for you? Um, you know, I think everybody's goal is, is to, you know, have a career in the NFL. Um, but for me, it's never been, it's never been about the money or the six figures or the fame. It's just, it's the true love of the game. And so I think, at least for me personally, um, I've just always loved kicking a ball. And if I can do it professionally, um, that's just a dream come true, regardless of the level. So um, I haven't thought about that too much. Um, I just want to be the best punter that I can be for anybody that, you know, wants me to do it for them. So um, I'm just excited for the season um, and just sort of going to take it one day at a time. Um, but I guess I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. That was, right no, that was fantastic. Yeah. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. No, but, no that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, um, and then I got a question in the comment section here just a second ago, and I actually okay. really liked it. It said, uh, have you ever tackled a returner? I think I had one or two, you know, on stats they go down as a tackle. 
but um, I'm pushing them out of bounds. Okay. I've never, you know, fit anybody up and really, um, you know, brought anybody down. But I guess that's a good thing, you know, if you're hanging the ball up there. Or, yeah, you or, don't have to worry you know, about that. You don't want to have to do that, but I've yet to. Um, only thing cool that I've done really is, you know, the two fakes that I ran. I that's think cool. they were both like 25-yard runs, but no tackles yet. Maybe this year. We'll see. All right. <laughs> awesome. So I don't really have too much else for you. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and doing this. Of course, no sweat. And uh, if any point you would like to talk to me again, I'll reach out. I'll keep in touch. Well, I'd love to have you on the show again. Uh, maybe even like hopefully after a few games of the Seattle Dragons, you could tell us about how that's going. You got it, man. That'd be excellent. Yeah, I got your number now and everything. So um, I'm look, looking forward to uh, – Touching base in the future, and I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, fantastic, and I'll be rooting for you out there. Good luck. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it, my friend. Take care. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. Brock Miller, guys. Whew. I don't know why I still get really excited about that. I still get super, super excited when I get done with these interviews, man. It's awesome. Awesome. Um, Brock, Brock Miller, punter, Seattle Dragons. Please, guys, let's support this 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 league, man, I'm really excited for it. Um, I, I want competition in the NFL and I want these guys to, you know, get film on them to be able to play in the NFL or whatever, just like get them some jobs, let them play. Let's get some more football other than a terrible league like the AAF. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that talk about like issues with the NFL, but you know, I look at it as a long run. Like now we have the NFL and now we have the XFL. When the NFL season's over, we still get more football and that's great. So let's support this. Let's make sure the XFL sticks around for a while, guys. Let's support this. Let's support these guys. I'm Nick from Talk Interference Sports. That was Brock Miller, Seattle Dragons punter. Thank you so much for you guys this time. You guys take care. I'll see you guys tomorrow for our picks.